In this video titled Circle Geometry, Chords, Arcs and Angles, we'll be learning how to apply certain theorems in circle geometry to solve practical questions. And our textbook of reference will be the New General Mathematics for Senior Secondary Schools, Book 2, and this is referenced in our description using the Harvard referencing style. So we'll be solving all the questions in the last exercise, which is exercise 2D, and then this will help us get familiar with certain theorems in circle geometry and we'll see how to apply them to solve questions. So the first question here says, use figure 2.27 to answer the following questions. Now this is um, figure 2.27 right here. And the first question says, which is 1A1, which arc subtends angle ABE? And the second part of the question says, Name an angle equal to angle ABE. So let's move over to a Microsoft whiteboard to see how we can answer this question. Now, this is question one, and the first part of the question, which is 1A1, says which arc subtends? angle ABE. It's really simple. In this diagram, we see that the angle ABE is right here. ABE. So this is the angle ABE. Now, we see that angle ABE is formed by lines AE and BE. Now we see that lines AB, line AB, originates from this point here, point A, and line BE originates from this point here, point E. And this A and E are joined by arc AE. So we say that the arc that subtends angle ABE is arc AE. So we'll write that down. So the answer to this, which arc subtends angle ABE? The answer is arc AE. And now to the second part of the question. This says, name an angle equal to ABE. All right. So in doing this, we're going to apply the circle theorem that says angles subtended by the same arc are equal. Now let's move over to the diagram to see how we can do this. In our diagram, we see that arc AE subtends angle ABE. That's already been established. Now what other angle is subtended by arc AE? We see that arc AE also subtends angle ACE, this angle here, because this line AC and this line EC that forms angle ACE come from, AC comes from this point A and EC comes from this point E. So we see that angle ABE is equal to angle ACE. So I've marked it by, I've marked both of them with a single line here and here. So let's write that down. So an angle equal to ABE is angle ACE. And the reason is angles subtended by arc AE. And now the B part of the question, 1B1, this says which arc subtends angle BEC? Now just the same way we did the previous one, let's go to our diagram to identify the arc. 
Now here in our diagram, and B E C is located here. This is angle B E C. Now we see that angle B E C is subtended by arc B C. And the second part of the question. Name two angles equal to E E C. Okay, so we're going to apply the same circle theorem that we applied in one and two, which states that angles subtended by the same arc are equal. So let's move to our diagram to see it. What other angle is subtended by arc BC? You see that arc BC subtends angle BAC right here. You see that arc BC also subtends angle BEC. So we say that two other angles equal to angle BEC are angle BAC here and angle BBC here. Angle BAC and angle EDC. And the reason is angles subtended by arc EC. And then the C part 1C1 says. Which arc subtends EAC, angle EAC, same as we did with the previous questions. This is angle EAC right here. It is subtended by arc EC here and here, or could say EDC, whichever one is correct. And once C2 says, name an angle equal to EAC. Okay, I'm going to apply the same circle theorem that we applied in the previous question, which says angle subtended by the same arc which will be arc EC in this case, arc equal. So let's see what other angles subtend are subtended by arc EC. Now in the diagram, we see that arc EC subtends EAC and also subtends EBC. So we say that angle EAC and angle EBC are equal. Name an angle equal to EAC, as we have found, that angle is angle EBC. Okay, so that's question one. Let's move over to question two. Now, question two says, line AB is a diameter of semicircle ABCD. If ABD equals 16 degrees, Calculate angle BCD. If angle ABD equals 16 degrees, calculate angle BCD. And they're giving us a hint which says join line CA. That is, we should join this point here, C, and this point A with the line. So let's move over to our Microsoft whiteboard to see how we can solve this. 
All right, so this is question two. And first of all, to find the missing marked angle here, which is angle BCD, we're going to join points C and A. And after we join points C and A with the broken line, we would appreciate the importance of joining these two points. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to join points C and A like this. All right. So now we've joined point C and A. Remember, this is a semicircle, so line AB is a diameter. And from our circle theorem, we know that the diameter of the circle subtends an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference. So we say that this angle here, from here to here, is 90 degrees. So let's write that down and see how we can solve for this angle from this point to this point. If we know the angle from this point to this point, we add it to 90 degrees, that gives us the missing angle BCD. So let's see how we can do that. So the question says find angle BCD. First of all, we see that angle BCA equals 90 degrees. And the reason is angle in semicircle is right angle. Okay. And now we know that angle BCD equals angle BCA plus angle ACD. So how do we get angle ACD? Now we see that from the diagram that arc AD subtends an angle of 16 degrees and it also subtends angle ACD, which means that angle ACD equals 16 degrees. So let's write that down. So we say that angle DBA equals angle ACD is equal to 16 degrees. And the reason is angle subtended angle subtended by arc AD. So now we know ACD is 16 degrees. Finding BCD will be a walk in the park. So this is equal to 90 degrees plus 16 degrees. And this is equal to 106 degrees. So this is our answer right here. Now let's move to the third question. The third question says, find the marked angles in each of the following. Where a point O is given, it is the center of the circle. So we have different questions, A, B, C, D, E, to I. So we're going to treat them one after the other. So let's move to our Microsoft whiteboard to solve them. So this is question 3a and we're to find this marked angle here. So I'm just going to label the diagram as A, B, C, D and I'll label this point here as X. Okay, so let's see how we can get this marked angle here. Now we see from the diagram that angle DXC equals angle BXA equals 90 degrees and the reason is basically opposite angles. 
So we'll say that this angle 90 degrees here is vertically opposite this angle BXA. So they are equal. Okay. And angle ABD equals 90 degrees minus 40 degrees. And the reason is angles in a right angle triangle and this is equal to 15 degrees. Moving on, we see that angle ABD equals angle ACD which is equal to 50 degrees and the reason is angles subtended by arc AD therefore our marked angle ACD equals 15 degrees so I'm just going to explain again so the first thing that we did was to find this angle here and we got it to be 90 degrees because this is vertically opposite to this angle here and then knowing that this angle is 90 degrees we simply said 90 minus 40 degrees this gave us this angle to be 50 degrees and knowing that this is 50 degrees here we see that it is subtended by arc a d and arc a d also subtends this angle here so it means that this 50 degrees here is equal to 50 degrees here and that's how we got the answer so let's move to the next question so this is question 3b i want to find this marked angle here so i'm going to label it as a B, C. So let's find this angle here. Now, one thing we can see from this diagram is that this is a diameter because this is labeled point O, as we were told in the question. Therefore, this angle here will be 90 degrees. And the reason is angle in the semicircle is right angle. So this is 90 degrees here. So if this is 90 degrees, we simply say that 90 degrees minus 58 degrees gives us this angle, and that is 32 degrees. So let's write the solution down. So we'll say that angle ABC equals 90 degrees, and the reason is angle in semicircle is right angle. I'll know that angle BAC equals 90 degrees minus 58 degrees. And the reason is angles in right angle triangle and this is equal to 32 degrees that's the answer now to the next question which is 3c right so this is question 3c and i'm going to start by labeling it a b c d e I'm also going to label the angles. This as W, this as Z, which is what we're interested in finding because it's the marked angle. I'll label this as X. I'll label this as Y. And that's all. Okay, so let's move to the solution. Let's see how we can find the marked angle Z. Okay, 
Remember, we want to find z. Okay. So first of all, you see that x equals 62 degrees. And the reason is exterior angle is equal to opposite interior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral and I'm going to show you. Now we see that this angle x here is opposite this interior angle of the cyclic quadrilateral ABCD. So if this is 62 degrees, x will also be 62 degrees. So this is one of our simple theorems that we have just applied here. Now, moving on, we see that W plus 85 degrees is equal to 180 degrees, as shown in the diagram. And the reason is angles on a straight line. Therefore, W is 180 degrees and is 85 degrees. And this gives us 95 degrees. We also see from the diagram that in triangle CDE, W plus X plus Z equals 180 degrees. And the reason is sum of angles in triangle C, D, E. Okay, so putting in the values of W and X, we have that 95 degrees plus 62 degrees plus Z equals 180 degrees. Therefore, Z equals 180 degrees minus 95 degrees minus 62 degrees. And Z equals 23 degrees. So that's the answer. I will move on to the next question. All right, so this is question 3D. I want to find this marked angle here. So I'm going to begin by labeling this shape. Start with this point A and then B and C. Okay, so we're going to make some modifications to this diagram. I'm going to join points O and A and we'll appreciate why I have done this as we proceed. So let me just join points A and A first with the broken line. Okay. Okay, now I've joined points O and A with the broken line. So we understand that OB and OA are radii of the circle and they're equal because we're told that the center of the circle is O. And then of course OC and OA are radii of the circle because they are because they come from um, the center of the circle and they are equal, of course. So let's see how we can solve for the missing angle, which is this angle right here. Okay, now we begin by saying angle BAC equals 116 degrees divided by 2, which is 58 degrees. And the reason is angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. Now we see that angle OAB is equal to angle OBA, which is equal to 25 degrees. Now the reason is 
base angles of isosceles triangle OAB as lines OB and lines and line OA are equal. So line OB is equal to line OA, which is equal to the radius of the circle. Therefore, OAB plus angle OAB plus angle OAC equals angle BAC, which is equal to 58 degrees. Angle OAB, which is 25 degrees, plus angle OAC equals 58 degrees. Therefore, angle OAC equals 58 degrees minus 25 degrees. And this is equal to 33 degrees. Now, since angle OAC is equal to angle OCA, the reason, and the reason, of course, is the these angles of isosceles triangle OAC as lines OC as line OC is equal to line OA is equal to radius of the circle. Therefore, angle OCA, which we are looking for is 33 degrees. So this is the answer. Now we're going to explain this in the diagram. We're going to explain everything I've done here in the diagram. Now, of course, um, we started by saying that angle BAC is half of angle BOC, which is 116 degrees here. So we've got this angle here as 58 degrees. And now we went on further to say that since angle OB, since line OB, I beg your pardon, and line OA are radii of the circle, it means that this triangle OBA is an isosceles triangle. And one property that we know of an isosceles triangle is that the base angles are equal. So this angle, 25 degrees here, will be equal to this angle here. So we say that this angle here is 25 degrees. All right. And if this is 25 degrees from here to here, from this point to this point here is 25 degrees. It means that from this point to this point will be 58 degrees minus 25 degrees. And we've got that to be 33 degrees. Also, in triangle OCA, we see that line OA and line OC are radii of the circle. Therefore, triangle OCA is an isosceles triangle. And if this angle here is 33 degrees, this angle here will be 33 degrees as well, because the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. So that is how we got our marked angle here as 33 degrees. So we'll move on to your next question. All right, so this is question 3E. And we're going to start by labeling the diagram like this. This is A, B, C, D. All right, and to label the angles, we label this marked angle as B. We label this as X, this as Y, this angle here as W and this angle here as U. Okay, so we're to find this angle here labeled B. So let's see how we can do this. So let's find B. 
So first of all, we see that y equals 32 degrees. And the reason is angles subtended by arc AB. Of course, we know that the angles subtended by an arc in the same segments are equal. That's one of our circle theorems. And then moving on, we say that x plus y plus 100 degrees equals 180 degrees. And the reason is angles on a straight line. If you're confused, I'll use the diagram to explain all steps of the calculations after we're done with the calculations. Now we see that y equals 32 degrees here. So we say x plus 32 degrees plus 100 degrees equals 180 degrees. We say that x equals 180 degrees minus 100 degrees minus 32 degrees. And this gives us 48 degrees. So x equals 48 degrees. Also, we see that u plus 85 degrees equals 180 degrees. And the reason is angles on a straight line. Therefore, u equals 180 degrees minus 85 degrees, which is equal to 95 degrees. All right. We also see that u plus w plus 32 degrees equals 180 degrees. And the reason is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. Okay. So putting in the value of u, we have that 95 degrees plus w plus 32 degrees equals 180 degrees. Therefore, w equals 180 degrees minus 95 degrees minus 32 degrees. And this gives us 53, 53 degrees. Yeah, yep, so that's 53 degrees. And now we know that W is 53 degrees. We also know that X is 48 degrees. So let's find B. Now we know that B plus W plus X equals 180 degrees. And the reason is sum of angles in a triangle. Therefore, B plus 53 degrees plus 48 degrees equals 180 degrees. Therefore, B equals 180 degrees minus 53 degrees minus 48 degrees. Therefore, B equals 79 degrees and this is the answer now let's move to the diagram so that i explain everything that i did in the calculation step by step all right so first of all we started by saying that y is 32 degrees because it is subtended by arc ab and arc ab also subtends this angle of 32 degrees in this segment so this 32 degree angle is equal to this angle here so we say this is 32 degrees. And we also see that this angle, 32 degrees, x and 100 degrees are in a straight line. So their sum or the sum of these three angles will be 180 degrees. So taking the sum of 32 degrees and 100 degrees from 180 degrees gives 48 degrees. That is x. Okay. And now, 
to find u, we said that since u and 85 degrees are on a straight line, therefore u will be 180 degrees minus 85 degrees. And the reason is sum of angles on a straight line is 180 degrees. So that's how we go u to be 95 degrees. Also, we see that ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral. And one of our circle theorems states that the sum of opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is 180, meaning that opposite angles of the cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So 95 degrees plus 32 degrees plus W equals 180 degrees. And with that equation, we're able to find W to be 53 degrees. And then we know that this is a triangle. So we can easily find V because the sum of all the angles in the triangle is 180. So 180 degrees minus the sum of 48 degrees and 53 degrees gives us 79 degrees. So that's how we got the solution. That's how we got the mapped angle V. This is question 3F. Now we're to find this mapped angle here. So I'm going to start by labeling the diagram as A. B, C, and I'll label our marked angle as X. So let's see how we can find X. Find X. Okay, so we see that reflex angle AOC equals 360 degrees minus 126 degrees and this is equal to 234 degrees therefore 234 degrees equals to x and the reason is angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. This is circumference here. So we have that two thirty-four degrees equals two x. Therefore x equals two thirty-four degrees divided by two which is equal to 117 degrees. And this gives us our answer. Now I'm going to illustrate this in the diagram. So this is our reflex angle AOC. And of course, angles at a point sum up to 360 degrees. So 360 degrees minus 1 to 6 gives us 2, 3, 4 degrees here. Oh, I forgot to state that in our solution so i'm just going to write that out so the reason is angles at a point and then since here is 234 degrees we know that the angle at center is twice the angle of circumference we need that 234 will be equal to 2x and means 234 is equal to 2x, x is 234 divided by 2. So that's how we got this to be 117 degrees. Now to the next question, which is question 3G. Okay, so this is question 3G, and we're to find this marked angle here. So we see that there are no figures here, so this might be a little bit confusing or perhaps terrifying to some but let's see how we can work this to get the missing angle okay so i'm going to start by labeling the diagram i'll start with here i'm going to say this is p and this is q and this is r we already know that this is o here so it is o p q r okay and then this is the center of the circle. So OP and OR are radii of the circle. So we say that this is R and this is R. 
and we see that line OR is parallel to line PQ and line OP is parallel to line QR. So this would be R as well, and this would be R as well. So since opposite lines are equal and parallel to each other, we say that this quadrilateral OPQR is a rhombus. Okay. And then one thing we know about one property we know of the rhombus is that opposite angles of a rhombus are equal. Right? So if this is x, this will be x. If this is y, this will be y. Alright, so let's see how we can get a figure to y. Let's see how we can find the value of y. So we're to find the value of y. Now, um, we stated that OPQR is a rhombus. And we stated one property of the rhombus, which is that opposite angles of the rhombus are equal. All right. Now, moving on, we see that reflex angle POR equals 2 times angle PQR, which is equal to 2x. And the reason is angle at center equals 2 times angle at circumference. So, reflex angle POR which is 2x plus angle POR gives 360 degrees and the reason is angles at a point. So we say 2x plus x equals 360 degrees and the reason is angles at a point. So we say that 3x equals 360 degrees and x equals 360 degrees over 3 which is equal to 120 degrees. So x is 120 degrees. Now, in quadrilateral OPQR, sum of angles is 360 degrees. So x plus x plus y plus y equals 360 degrees. And the reason is sum of angles in OPQR. So we have that 2x plus 2y equals 360 degrees. Remember um, 2x, remember x is 120 degrees, so we can just say 2 into 120 plus 2y equals 360 degrees, therefore 240 degrees plus 2y equals 360 degrees. And 2y equals 360 degrees minus 240 degrees and 2y equals 120 degrees.
therefore y equals 120 degrees over 2 which is equal to 60 degrees so this is our answer now let's move to the next question all right so this is question 3h i'm going to leave all this diagram as a b c d and e okay so let's see how we can find the mat angle which is this angle here Okay, so first of all, angle CDB equals 90 degrees. And the reason is angle in a semicircle is right angle. Going further, we see that angle BDE equals angle BCE which is equal to 20 degrees and the reason is angles subtended by arc BE at circumference going further angle CDA equals angle CDB plus angle BDE and this is equal to 90 degrees plus 20 degrees is equal to 100 and 10 degrees. Also, angle CDA plus angle ACD plus angle DAC equals 180 degrees. Therefore, fixing in values, 110 degrees plus ACD angle ACD plus 28 degrees equals 180 degrees therefore angle ACD equals 180 degrees minus 110 degrees minus 28 degrees and this is equal to 42 degrees angle ACD is 42 degrees moving on angle BCE plus angle DCE equals angle ACD So 20 degrees plus angle DCE equals 42 degrees. Therefore, angle DCE equals 42 degrees minus 20, to, minus 20 degrees. And that gives us 23 degrees, which is the answer. So let me illustrate this in the diagram. Now first we said that angle CDB is 90 degrees because line CB is a diameter and then angle which means that CDB here is a semicircle so um, 
angle in the stem circle, of course, is a right angle that's 90 degrees. So that's why angle CDB is 90 degrees. So this angle here is 90 degrees. And then I went on further to state that angle BDE is equal to angle BCE because we can see that they are both both angles are subtended by arc BE. That's this angle and this angle. So we said this is 20 degrees. And then we said that angle C, CDA, that's angle CDA, is 110 degrees. That's from this point to this point. That's 110 degrees. Adding both together, 90 plus 20. Right, and now to find um, angle ACD, we looked at the triangle CDA. Oh, we didn't, I didn't state that, so let me just state that here. Okay, the reason here is um, sum of angles in triangle CDA. All right. Now that's stated. So we looked at triangle CDA and you can see that this angle here is 110 degrees and this angle here is 28 degrees. Meaning that 110 degrees plus 28 degrees if you take the sum of 110 degrees and 28 degrees away from 180 degrees, you get this angle from here to here. And we got it to be 42 degrees. And then we said 42 degrees minus 20 degrees gave us this angle here, this marked angle here to be 22 degrees. So that's how we got the answer. All right, so let's move to the next question. So the next question here is question 3i. And we're going to make some modifications to the diagram. And we'll appreciate why we have made um, such modification when we do it. So let's see. First of all, I'll label the diagram. This is A, B, C, and D. And then I'm going to join points A and C together. So let's do that. All right. Now I've joined points A and C together, and then we can see that this angle here is 90 degrees because this is a diameter of the circle. So this is 90 degrees. All right. So let's see how we can um, solve to find the missing angle, which is this, I mean, the marked angle, which is this angle here, angle ABC. Remember, this is A here. So let's find angle ABC. Now, you see that, of course, angle ACD equals 
90 degrees. And the reason is angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Okay. Angle BCD equals 180 degrees minus 63 degrees. And the reason is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So angle BCD equals 118 degrees. Now, angle ACB equals 118 degrees minus 90 degrees, which is 28 degrees. And angle ACB equals angle BAC, which is equal to 28 degrees. And the reason is base angles of isosceles triangle A, B, C. Therefore, angle ABC equals 180 degrees minus angle BAC plus and write this out quick. Um, mm -hmm. Plus angle ACB. And the reason is sum of angles in triangle ABC. And this is equal to 180 degrees minus 28 degrees plus 28 degrees. And this is equal to 180 degrees minus 56 degrees. And this is equal to 124 degrees. So the marked angle ABC is 124 degrees. Now let me explain this in the diagram. So first of all, we said that this was 90 degrees. We already established that because this is a diameter and angle in semicircle is 90 degrees. Now we see that this ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral and this angle 62, which is opposite this angle here, is supplementary to it. Therefore, this angle will be 180 minus 62, which gives us 118 degrees. And if from this point to this point is 90 degrees, it means from this point to this point will be 118 degrees minus 90 degrees. So that gives us 28 degrees. And we see that this here are lines of symmetry, meaning that this line AB is equal to line BC. So it makes ABC an isosceles triangle. Therefore, this angle from here to here is 28 degrees. And this angle will be 180 degrees minus the sum of the base angles because the sum of angles in triangle is 180 degrees. So 180 degrees minus the sum of this and this gives us 124 degrees. All right, so this is question four. I want to find this marked angle here, which is angle DAE. So let's see how we can find it. 
to find angle DAE. So first off, angle ADE equals angle ABC, which is equal to 102 degrees. And the reason is exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to opposite interior angle. Moving on, angle ADE plus angle AED plus angle DAE equals 180 degrees. And the reason is sum of angles in triangle DAE. So, putting in the values, 102 degrees plus 47 degrees plus angle DAE equals 180 degrees. Therefore, angle DAE equals 180 degrees minus 102 degrees minus 47 degrees. Now this is equal to 31 degrees, which is our answer. Now let's explain using the diagram. So first off, we stated that this angle here, which is angle ADE, is equal to this angle here. So this is 102 degrees. And the reason is that exterior angles of cyclic quadrilateral, cyclic quadrilateral here is ABCD, is equal to the opposite interior angle. So if this is 102 degrees, it means that this is 102 degrees. And we see that shape DAE is a triangle, meaning that 180 degrees minus a sum of 47 degrees and 102 degrees gives our marked angle here, and we got it to be 31 degrees. Straightforward like that. So let's move to the next question. All right, so question five says, ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral such that line AB is parallel to line DC. That's what this notation means here. Line AB is parallel to line DC. If angle ACB equals 35 degrees and angle DCB equals 72 degrees, calculate the sizes of the angles of the trapezium. Okay, so let's move over to our Microsoft whiteboard to see how we can solve this question. All right, so this is question five, and we're to find all the angles of the trapezium here. That's angle A, B, C, and D. So let's see how we can do this. Find the angles of B. Trapezium, that's angle A, B, C, and D. All right, so first off, we begin by stating that angle ACD is equal to angle ABD, which is equal to 35 degrees. And the reason is angles subtended by arc AD. Okay, 
moving on we say angle D B C equals angle D A C which is equal to 72 degrees and the reason is angles subtended by arc DC also angle ACD equals angle BAC which is equal to 35 degrees and the reason is alternate angles as line AB is parallel to line DC okay now we see that angle A equals 72 degrees plus 35 degrees which is 107 degrees and angle B equals 35 degrees plus 72 degrees which is equal to 107 degrees if it's a bit confusing just be patient I'll explain using the diagram soon and then we see that angle A plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees because they are opposites and they are supplementary and the reason is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary therefore angle C equals 180 degrees minus 107 degrees which is equal to 73 degrees now to find angle D We say that angle B plus angle D is 180 degrees and the reason is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary so angle D equals 180 degrees minus 107 degrees which is 73 degrees so the angles of the trapezium are 107 degrees 107 degrees 73 degrees and 73 degrees so let's explain with the diagram so first of all i said angle acd is equal to angle abd because they are both subtended by arc AD. So I got here to be 35 degrees. And then I said angle DBC equals angle DAC, which is equal to 72 degrees because they are both subtended by arc DC. 72 degrees here and 72 degrees here. Right? And then I said that angle ACD, which is this here, is equal to angle BAC, which is this angle here, because they are alternate to each other. And alternate angles are equal, so this and this are equal. Therefore, summing this and this together, we have that this angle here is 107 degrees. And summing this and this, we have that this angle here is 107 degrees. Now we see that angle A is opposite this angle here, and we know that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So 180 minus 107 degrees gives this angle here, and it is 73 degrees. Also, this angle here is opposite this one here, and is supplementary to it. 
So 180 minus 107 gives 73 degrees. So that's how we got the angles of the quadrilateral. Now let's move to the next question. Question six says, angle PQR equals 80 degrees and angle SRT equals 20 degrees. What size is angle PXR? And we see that this is a white question. So let's see how we can solve this in our Microsoft whiteboard. So this is question six here. And we're to find angle PXR, which is this angle here. All right, so let's um, get right to it. Right, find angle PXR. So first of all, angle PQR plus angle XSR equals 180 degrees. And the reason is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. So we have that 80 degrees plus angle SX, XSR equals 180 degrees. That's a bit of a tongue twister. So angle XSR it equals 180 degrees minus 80 degrees, and this gives 100 degrees. Moving on, angle XSR plus angle SRT plus angle SXR equals 180 degrees, and the reason is sum of angles in a triangle and this triangle is triangle SXR 100 degrees plus 20 degrees plus angle SXR equals 180 degrees. Therefore, angle SXR equals 180 degrees minus 100 degrees minus 20 degrees. And this is equal to 60 degrees. All right, moving on, angle PXR plus angle SXR equals 180 degrees. And the reason is angles on a straight line. So angle PXR equals 180 degrees minus angle SXR which is equal to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees. Therefore, angle PXR equals 120 degrees. All right, so let's see how we got this in the diagram. We said that angle PQR and this angle here, angle XSR are supplementary because we see that P, PQRS forms a cyclic quadrilateral. So if this is 80, this would be 180 minus 80. So that's 100 degrees. And then we see that this is 20 degrees here and this is 100 degrees. Therefore, angle SXR, which is this angle, would be 180 degrees minus the sum of 120, which gives us 
60 degrees. Now we see that this angle and this angle here, which we are to find on a straight line. Therefore, this angle will be 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, which gives 120 degrees. So that's how we got the answer. Now moving on to the next question. Question seven says, O is the center. Question seven says, O is the center of the circle MLY. If O angle OLY equals 50 degrees and angle OMY equals 15 degrees, calculate angle MOL. So let's see how we can do this in our whiteboard. So we're asked to find angle MOL. Okay, so first of all, angle OLY equals angle OYL, which is equal to 50 degrees. And the reason is these angles of isosceles triangle as line OY equals line OL equals radius. Okay, so angle LOY plus angle OLY plus angle OYL equals 180 degrees. And the reason is sum of angles in triangle OYL. Okay, so angle LOY plus 50 degrees plus 50 degrees equals 180 degrees. Therefore, angle LOY equals 180 degrees minus 50 degrees minus 50 degrees. And this is 80 degrees. Moving on. Angle OMY equals angle OYM, which is equal to 15 degrees. And the reason is these angles of isosceles triangle OYM. Because line OM equals line OY equals radius of the circle. Therefore, angle MOY plus angle OMY plus angle OY. M equals 180 degrees and the reason is sum of angles in triangle OY M okay so angle MOY plus 15 degrees plus 15 degrees equals 180 degrees so angle MOY equals 180 degrees minus 30 degrees angle MOY equals 150 degrees
going further. Angle MOL plus angle LOY equals angle MOY is equal to 150 degrees. Angle MOL plus angle LOY, which we got to be 80 degrees, equals 150 degrees. Therefore, angle MOL equals 150 degrees minus 80 degrees, which is equal to 70 degrees. So that's the answer. Now let's explain it using the diagram. So first of all, we said that angle OLY is equal to angle OYL. So this here is 50 degrees. And then to find angle LOY, simply the sum of this angle and this angle, which is 100, and then 180 minus 100, that gives us 80 degrees. I remember this angle is equal to this angle because this is the center of the circle and line OY and line OL are radii, meaning that as they are equal, the base angles of this triangle here are equal as well. Okay, and then we said that OMY, angle OMY is equal to this angle OYM here. That's 15 degrees. The same reason as before, because this OM is a radius and OY is a radius, so the base angles here are equal. So 15 plus 15, that's 30 degrees. And 180 minus 30 degrees gives 150. So this whole angle here is 150 degrees. So if this whole angle here is 150 degrees and from here to here is 80 degrees, it means from here to here will be 150 degrees minus 80 degrees, and that gives 70 degrees. So that's how we got the answer to be 70 degrees. Now on to the next question. So question eight says, PQRS is a cyclic quadrilateral such that angle QPR is 18 degrees and angle RQS is 42 degrees. If angle PSR is 78 degrees, calculate the angles of triangle PQS and what kind of triangle is triangle PQS? So let's see how we can do that. Now it said um, this quadrilateral is a cyclic quadrilateral, meaning that the vertices PQ, R and S will touch the circumference of a circle. So this quadrilateral will be enclosed in a circle. So let's see how we can do that. All right, this is question eight, and we are to find the angles of the triangle PQS. That's this angle, this angle, and this angle. So let's work this out. Find the angles of triangle PQS. Okay. So first off, angle PQR plus angle PSR 
equals 180 degrees. And the reason is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. So angle PQR plus 78 degrees equals 180 degrees. Therefore, angle PQR equals 180 degrees minus 78 degrees. And this is equal to 102 degrees. Moving on, angle PQS plus angle SQR equals angle PQR. So angle PQS plus 42 degrees equals 102 degrees. Angle PQS equals 102 degrees minus 42 degrees. And this is equal to 60 degrees. Therefore, angle PQS is 60 degrees. And angle SPR equals angle SQR equals 42 degrees. And the reason is angles subtended by arc RS. Now, if you're confused, just hold on. I'll explain using the diagram after finding the solution. Now, angle QPS Angle QPS equals angle QPR plus angle SPR. This is equal to 18 degrees plus 42 degrees, which is equal to 60 degrees. So angle QPS is 60 degrees. Now remember, um, angle PQS is the first angle of our triangle PQS, and angle QPS here is the second angle of our triangle, um, which is 60 degrees as well. So now let's find the last angle of the triangle. Now. Angle QPS plus angle PQS plus angle QSP equals 180 degrees. And the reason is sum of angles in triangle PQS. Therefore, 60 degrees plus 60 degrees plus angle QSP equals 180 degrees. Therefore, angle QSP equals 180 degrees minus 60 degrees minus 60 degrees. And this is equal to 60 degrees. Therefore, the angles of the triangle are 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees. Now, to answer the second part of the question, since all angles of triangle PQS equals 60 degrees, 
therefore triangle PQS is an equilateral triangle so remember the properties of an equilateral triangle is that all angles are equal and there are 60 degrees and all sides are equal as well now let's go to the diagram so that I explain how I did all the mathematics here so first of all I said that angle PQR and angle PSR this is angle PQR here from here to here and angle PSR from here to here are supplementary because they are opposite angles of cyclo-quadrilateral so if this from this point to this point 78 degrees this will be 180 minus 78 degrees so I got here to be 102 degrees so if from here to here it's 42 degrees it means that from this point to this point will be 102 minus 42 degrees that's 60 degrees right and then the next thing that I did was that I said since arc RS subtends this 42 degree angle here, then it means that this angle, which is also subtended by arc RS, will be 42 degrees. Therefore, 18 plus 42 gives us 60 degrees. And that's how we got the first angle of our triangle, 60 degrees. I'm sorry, the second angle of our triangle, 60 degrees. We already got the first angle here to be 60 degrees. And now we know that this angle here is 60 degrees and this angle here is 60 degrees so we're left with the third angle I will know that the sum of angles in the triangle is 180 degrees so 180 degrees minus the sum of this angle here and this angle gives 60 degrees here as well so we got that all the angles of this triangle PQS are 60 degrees 60 degrees and 60 degrees and since they are all equal Triangle PQS is an equilateral triangle. So that's the solution to the question. Now on to the next question, which is question nine. So question nine says, prove that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. And the B part says, calculate the value of X, given a reason for each step in your answer. This is the diagram here, where to calculate the value of x here okay let's see how we can solve this all right so this is question 9a and we're required to prove that opposite angles of the second quadrilateral are supplementary prove that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary is supplementary okay so let's begin now we see that from our diagram that angle BOC equals to Y and reflex angle BOC equals to X and the reason is angle at center equals two times angle at circumference okay therefore 2X plus 2y equals 360 degrees and the reason is angles at a point okay 
or 2 into x plus y equals 360 degrees or x plus y equals 360 degrees divided by 2 or x plus y equals 180 degrees because the very definition of two quantities being supplementary is that they add up to 180 degrees QED so let me just explain this quickly in the diagram now um, this angle here is 2y and the reason is that angle at center is twice the angle at circumference so this is y here this is 2y and then this reflects angle here is 2x and the reason is angle at center is twice angle circumference and then 2y plus 2x equals 360 because sum of angles at a point is 360 and then of course if you factorize and divide by 2 you get that x plus y is 180 degrees so we have successfully proven that the sum of these opposite angles here and the cyclic quadrilateral is uh, 180 degrees so x and y are supplementary angles here all right so let's move on to the second part of the question this is the second part of question 9 which is question 9b and we've been asked to find x so let's see how we can solve this find x. So first of all, we see that angle BCE equals angle DAB, which is equal to 2x. And the reason is exterior angle of cyclic quadrilateral is equal to interior opposites angle. Now we see that angle BCE plus angle CBE plus angle B. EC equals 180 degrees and the reason is sum of angles in triangle BCE therefore 2x plus 60 degrees plus x equals 180 degrees Therefore, 3x plus 60 degrees equals 180 degrees. And 3x equals 180 degrees minus 60 degrees. And 3x equals 120 degrees. Therefore, x equals 120 degrees over 3, which is equal to 40 degrees. And this is the value of x. So I'm just going to explain this in the diagram. Now, first of all, we saw that angle BCE is opposite this interior angle of the cyclic quadrilateral ABCD. So we said that this is 2x as well. This is one of our circle theorems. And then we see that this is a triangle BCE. And of course, 2x plus x plus 60 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. And the reason is sum of angles in triangle is 180 degrees. So solving that equation, we got x to be 40 degrees. And that's how we got the answer. So let's move to the next question. Now question 10a says, O is the center of the circle and A, B and P are points on the circumference. Prove that angle A will be equals 2 times angle APB. Now let's see how we can prove this in our whiteboard. Alright, so this is the first part of the question 10. 
and we have to prove that angle A will be equals 2 times angle APB. So to do this, I'm going to make a slight modification to the diagram by drawing a broken line across um, this point O and P. So I'll just do that. Okay, so I'm going to call this point Q here. And then I'll label the angles. Here will be X1. Here will be X2. Here will be Y2. And here will be Y1. Okay, so let's um, begin. So the question is, Prove that angle A will be equals to times angle APB. Now remember, looking at the diagram, angle APB equals Y2. Therefore, 2 times angle APB equals to Y2. So we're to prove that angle A will B equals to Y2. Now, from the diagram, we can see that angle A will B equals angle B or Q minus angle A O Q. And we can also see that angle B O Q equals X2 plus Y2 plus Y1. And the reason is exterior angle of a triangle equals sum sum of opposite interior angles of the triangle okay So x2 plus y2, x2 plus y2 equals y1. And the reason is these angles of isosceles triangle OPB. Okay, therefore, angle BOQ equals X2 plus Y2 plus X2 plus Y2. Okay, put in X2 plus Y2 in place of Y1 here. So angle BOQ equals 2X2 plus 2Y2. So collecting the like terms, that's x2 plus x2, that's 2x2, or y2 plus y2, that's 2y2. All right. Moving on. Angle AOQ equals x1 plus x2. And the reason is exterior angle, exterior angle of triangle equals sum of opposites interior 
angles. And then x1 equals x2. And the reason is these angles of isosceles triangle are equal. And the triangle here is um, triangle OAP. Okay. Now they're equal because line OA and line OP are radii. And the same thing um, with the previous one that we did here line OP and line OB are radii. So that's why um, x2 plus y2 is equal to y1 in triangle OPB. All right. So angle AOQ equals x2 plus x2, which is equal to 2x2. Therefore, angle AOB equals angle BOQ minus angle AOQ, which is equal to, this is seen in the diagram, this is equal to 2x2 plus 2y2 minus 2x2 because BOQ is 2x2 plus 2y2 that's what we have here and AOQ is 2x2 that's what we have here so this is equal to 2y2 because we cancelled out this and cancelled this out 2x and minus 2x so that's 0 so we're left with 2y2 so angle A will be is equal to 2y2 which is equal to 2 times angle APB QED. So we have proven that angle A will be is equal to 2 times angle APB. Now let's move to the diagram so that I explain what I did here. Now 10B says PQRS are points on the circle such that angle PQS is equal to angle PRQ. Prove that line PS is equal to line PQ. And the second part is, hence, if SQ is the diameter of the circle and line QR is produced to Z, determine angle SQP and angle SRZ, give reasons. All right, so this is question 10B, and this is the figure PQRS. Now, we've been told that this angle here is equal to this angle here, so I'll just name them x and x. So we to prove that ps is equal to pq. So let's see how we can do this. We've been asked to prove that ps is equal to PQ. All right, first off, we see that angle P SQ equals angle P RQ, which is equal to X. And the reason is angles subtended by arc PQ. So since angle PSQ equals X, which is also equal to angle SBQ, we say that 
the base angles of triangle PSQ are equal. Therefore, triangle PSQ is an isosceles triangle. And therefore, since the base angles are equal, line PS and line PQ which form the base angle write this clearly line PS and line PQ which form the base angles with line SQ are equal. So this is Q D. So this is X as we're showing as we showed in our calculation and then since this is x and this is x means that this side is equal to this side because the base angles of this triangle pqs are equal so or triangle psq whichever um, you choose to call it so um, this line here ps and pq are equal. So we have successfully proven that. Now let's move to the second part of the question. Now in the second part of the question 10b2, we're told that SQ is a diameter. So this is the center of the circle, O, and we're told that QR is produced to point Z, which, has, which I have done here. I've produced it to this point Z. So we've been asked to find angle SQP that's this angle here angle SQP so let's um, see how we can find the solution so this is the second part of 10b and we've been told that sq is a diameter so this is the center of the circle O here and we've been told that qr is produced to z which has which i have done here so we've been asked to find angle sqp and angle srz so i'm just going to draw a broken line SR to make an angle SRZ. Alright, so I'm going to draw a broken line to join points S and R so that we make our angle SRZ. Okay. So this is angle SRZ, I want to find it. Alright, so let's let's um, get the solution. Find angle SQP and angle SRZ. So if SQ is a diameter, it follows that 
and go SRQ equals 90 degrees. And the reason is angle in a semi circle is a right angle. So angle SRZ plus angle SRQ equals 180 degrees. And the reason is angles on a straight line. So angle SRZ plus 90 degrees equals 180 degrees. So angle SRZ equals 180 degrees minus 90 degrees. And this is equal to 90 degrees. So we've gotten SRZ to be 90 degrees. Now to find angle SQP. We've got an angle SRZ to be 90 degrees, so let's find angle SQP. Okay. So, angle SPQ equals 90 degrees. And the reason is angle in a semi circle is a right angle. Therefore, ninety degrees plus x plus x equals 180 degrees and the reason is sum of angles in a triangle therefore 90 degrees plus 2x equals 180 degrees therefore 2x equals 180 degrees minus 90 degrees Therefore, 2x equals 90 degrees. Therefore, x equals 90 degrees over 2, which is equal to 45 degrees. Now, you can see that angle SQP is equal to x, and therefore it is. 45 degrees. Therefore, angle SRZ is 90 degrees and angle SQP is 45 degrees. So this is the answer, this is the solution to the question. Now let's let me explain using the diagram. Okay, so first of all, since SQ, since we're told SQ is a diameter, it means that the angle it forms here will be 90 degrees. So this angle here will be 90 degrees. And if this angle here is 90 degrees, this will also be 90 degrees because this angle here and this one here are on a straight line. So it means that this will be 180 minus 90, which is 90 degrees. Okay, so that's how I found SRZ. Now, if SQ is a diameter, this angle here would also be a right angle. That's 90 degrees. And if this is 90 degrees, it means that 90 degrees plus x plus x is equal to 180 degrees and solving for x we'll get that x is 45 degrees 
and that's how we got that angle SQP is 45 degrees. So that's the solution to this question. So we're done with all the questions in the last exercise of the second chapter of the book, which is titled Circle Geometry, Chords, Arcs and Angles. I hope you learned a lot. Feel free to leave your comments and suggestions in the comment section. And please, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.